Hey, welcome everybody to three minute soccer coaching tips. What I'm trying to do is give you good information in a small amount of time, and I'm trying to connect theory into practice design. So what we're gonna talk about today is internal versus external cues. So internal is something, I'll give you an example of a push pass. You would think of the plant foot, maybe locking the ankle, maybe the toe up. Those are internal focuses. An external focus would be, did the ball go to your partner? Did it go in between a gate? Did it go to where it was supposed to do? Uh, supposed to go? That's the result. So the external focus is focusing on the end product. So internal cues by science are proven to be less effective than external cues How, in, when it comes to performance. However, you can still use internal cues with an external focus, but you should only use one cue at a time. And here's the example I'm gonna give you is the plant foot, right? So if you're teaching a new player how to, how to kick the ball in a push pass, you would just say, make sure that your plant foot is pointing in the direction where you wanna pass the ball. That's it. So the external focus is, did it go through the gate to your partner? And the only internal focus is your plant foot. Because if you try to do too many internal focuses, your body is not made to carry things out like that. You wanna have some natural um, flow to your technique because if, you're broken, if you break that flow up with too many points to concentrate on internally, it's gonna break the natural flow of the technique. So, next, we want to have game representative coupling in this. Eventually, we start off with the plant foot. After the plant foot and they get it and they're constantly doing it and they're, they're free to explore their own movement, then we say, how about the toe up? How about the ankle lock? Once they got the technique and they have all this down, now, you see we added a player. Now, can we hit this push pass through the gate by the defender as your, as your partner now creates space. So maybe a partner comes here, this is now game representative. Can we then continue to make this more game representative, maybe in a rondo, a 4v1 rondo. Now we're using the push pass while we're keeping the ball. So this is still the push pass, but it's more game representative. And then obviously the application of the push pass in the real game is the ultimate of game representative because it is the game so now we went all the way from choosing an internal cue having an external cue passing the ball through the gates right then we made it game representative and then we built on that game representative until we had the final real game so that's a really short lesson on internal and external cueing and again just as a as a reminder in the game of basketball let's say internal cue maybe your elbow position maybe your follow-through maybe your wrist position on the follow-through an external cue did you hit the backboard in the right spot did you get it just over the front of the rim did it go in the basket those are all external cues what was the end result of the final product so i told you i tried to keep it to three minutes i almost did it i hope you enjoyed it see you